present uh, Ellen Sely from uh, Liberia, uh, former Prime Minister of uh, Japan, Dr. I can't even pronounce it. Um, <laughs> UNFPA Executive Director, uh, IPPF, and uh, Foreign Minister of uh, Ethiopia. Allow me before I go into my speech to thank UNFPA and the IPPF for standing by Malawi for many years. I feel greatly honored and privileged to give a, 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 this a keynote address on the returns on investments in maternal health family planning 2020 and the campaign for accelerated reduction of maternal mortality in Africa, Kama. I wish to thank the co-organizers of this very important meeting for giving major attention to issues of maternal health in Africa. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, since the founding of Kama in May 2009, 38 African countries have launched the campaign in Africa to date. The campaign has attracted very high level political commitment at national and regional levels. This has given more visibility to issues of maternal, newborn, and child health as governments, communities, and private sector took ownership of the programs as they participated in the social mobilization and implementation of projects. In operationalizing the campaign for accelerated reduction of maternal mortality in Africa, many countries continue to implement evidence-based, cost-effective, and high-impact interventions to ensure uh, that no woman dies while giving birth. It is important to note that improvements in maternal, newborn, and child health are critical to overall development of nations. A huge body of research work and general experience have shown quite remarkable results of tangible uh, returns on investment in maternal health which are far-reaching. As a mother myself, I think how easily I could have been, I could have died on the 23rd of January 1984, when I suffered postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, I was only fortunate to be attended to by a qualified doctor. However, so many women in Africa are not as lucky as I was. In many of our communities in Africa, when a woman gets pregnant, almost everyone is anxious. Anxious because they have seen so many women die while giving life. And yet, in some societies, mostly in developed countries, when a woman is pregnant, she and her family celebrate and are truly expectant. Expectant that she will deliver safely, expectant for the child she will deliver. This should not be the case. We need to eliminate these injustices to our women in Africa. African women are entitled to enjoy their full reproductive health life. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to inform you that when the campaign for accelerated reduction of maternal mortality in Africa was launched in May 20, Malawi was one of the eight countries that were selected to spearhead this effort. I was honored to serve as Malawi's goodwill ambassador for Safe Motherhood under Kama Initiative. Because we believe in the value of Kama, we launched it at both national and district levels. We pledged our full support to Kama's agenda for accelerating action to reduce maternal and associated infant mortality, mobilizing political commitment and support for key stakeholders and communities for additional resources and involvement and building on tested best practices. And UNFPA supported us a lot in this endeavor. I believe that in order to adequately reduce maternal mortality, it is essential to address poverty and gender inequality which together affect the demand for utilization and supply of maternal health care services. There's a critical link between population change and economic growth. In most countries, falling fertility rates have led to expanding working adult populations and a smaller proportion of dependent children. Educated girls lead demographic change. An educated girl marries later and has fewer children. She seeks medical care sooner for herself and children and thereby increases the probability of her children's survival. She's likely to improve her children's learning and education as a result reduces overall 
fertility rates. The economic and social impact can be transformative. Family planning can play an important role in facilitating economic growth. While it is critical for policies and programs to improve and expand services, as well as reduce the burden of cost for low-income women, these actions per se may not be sufficient to guarantee <coughs> adequate returns on investment in maternal health care. Evidence has shown that the disappointing progress made towards MDG 5 could be due to the failure of programs to take a comprehensive, a comprehensive approach to the health of poor mothers. It is important that women's needs, aspirations, and realities become central drivers of policies and programs to increase maternal health care access and utilization. Women must be empowered to have to be actively involved in all decisions related to their health and well-being. As I've said in many times before, in Malawi and elsewhere, we cannot talk about empowering a particular group without involving the group itself. No decision should be made about women without women involvement. Equally, no decision should be made about the girl child without her involvement in the process. Therefore, excellences, ladies and gentlemen, the message that I bring to you here and now is that nothing for us without us, nothing for women without their involvement and inclusion. I see that I have three minutes, so allow me to just make recommendations to this August gathering. One, I believe that we should develop policies and programs that bring income into household so that children are not considered as wealth for families. Two, invest to support education for the girl child so that girls can complete primary, secondary, and tertiary education, especially in Africa. This is critical in families where they have no reliable income. Three, promote the involvement of traditional leaders as custodians of culture and tradition. Traditional leaders enjoy power and influence in society, and we can redirect this influence to positive energies. Four, engage and involve male folks in family planning and maternal health programs because of patriarchal societies and attitudes. Five, provide economic empowerment for women as this leads to social emancipation. This, among other things, empowers women to make informed decisions that affect them, including political participation, reproductive rights, and education for their children. And finally, establish institutional framework that will enable women and girls to sustain their achievements. For example, we need to support mechanism for parliamentarians and presidents in state house and women who have achieved various serious senior decision-making positions that they do not drop out from their successes. I say this because the girl child in Africa struggles to stay in school, the woman, the housewife struggles to stay in a marriage, the, girl, uh, the parliamentarians struggles to remain in the House of Parliament, and the president struggles to stay in state house. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.